Morning guys, it's about 7 a.m. Got something I wanna work on today and I'm gonna show you what that is. So I've noticed that when we're in the uh, shelter in the direct sunlight, it's, you know, it's pretty warm inside. So I wanted to build some sort of a shade uh, over the top of Abel and his shelter. So I came across these on Facebook Marketplace. Um, I got four of them for 700 bucks and they seem to be just the right size to provide some shade over Abel. Let me pull them out of here and I'll, uh, I'll tell you a little bit about them. So as I was saying, I got these uh, shades. They got some, uh, just like a blue pattern on them or something. I'm not quite, hey, wait a minute. What's this thing on the back for? Oh, hey, these are solar panels. Check it out. Let's look at some of the details here. Oh, it looks like they're 280 watts. They've got a working voltage of about 32 volts. And it looks like they've got about nine amps on each panel. That's crazy. Anyhow, huh, well I guess this is a win-win because now I have some sort of solar power, 280 times four. Let's see, what is that? Well, that's 1120 watts, isn't it? I'm pretty sure it is. My math might be wrong, but, huh, well, now I got to figure out how to mount these. I think I'll take some measurements and then figure out what to do up there. And I got to see what kind of materials I have laying around and if I need to make a run to the hardware store to buy some more mounting hardware. I might have enough here, I might not. We'll have to see. Guys, check this out. It's cloudy. It's raining out. And this panel is about half exposed. Look at the voltage it's putting out. <laughs> this is going to be awesome. Oh my goodness. Uh, my goal for this build was to try to get everything for under a thousand bucks. And uh, I have a controller on the way. Made actually, it's made by Xantrex, and it was only 166 bucks. Um, and then I bought a control pad for it, a remote mount control pad for another 85. So to get into this, I was thinking it was going to be close to 3,000 dollars, but coming in at under a thousand, this is going to be awesome. I have to order a few more components. Um, I only got two 10 foot sticks of strut and I think I need to go get two more uh, for the way I want to mount these up on the top of Able. But this setup is going to provide about a 90% shade over the shelter and uh, in return for that we get uh, basically unlimited power because if these things are putting this amount of voltage out in cloudy rainy conditions I can't even imagine what would happen on a super sunny day. Um, there should be enough uh, voltage and amperage being applied by these panels uh, to run the air conditioner inside the shelter uh, for quite some time as long as there's some sort of daylight. So obviously at night it cools down so you wouldn't re need to run the air conditioner but during the day if we're like in the middle of the desert or something or maybe we're uh, camping by a lake and uh, we just want to come in and watch a movie and cool down a bit I think this would be the perfect solution for that plus it'll charge the batteries on top of the amount of power that the air conditioner is using because the air conditioner when the compressor turns on it uses 450 watts and then when the compressor turns off it only uses about 70 to 100 watts so this should be interesting. They say that you can't use solar to power an air conditioner. Well, I don't think that's true. If you have enough wattage, I would think that you could control an air conditioner pretty well. And the voltage just keeps going up. 
pretty crazy. All right, I gotta do some research now since I jumped into this deal and uh, figure out what I need to do to uh, get these this up and running and order some parts if I need to. All right, after a couple hours of digging through bins and stuff, I can't find some of the connectors that I thought I had. Maybe I use them on another project, but I kind of got a assortment of hardware laid out. I might have to run to the um, parts store, hardware store, but the majority of the stuff that I got, I think it's gonna work. I'm gonna do a mock layout and take some measurements on the garage floor here. And then uh, hopefully it stops raining out. I just swept off the rooftop of the shelter. It was still wet up there. Um, since I'm gonna be doing some attachments to the roof, I need to be able to make sure that the uh, Sikaflex is gonna dry. It does pretty well in the rain, but I just wanna make sure. So, I guess let's get started on this uh, mock layout for the uh, panels. Okay, this is how I think I'm gonna lay it out. Uh, aside from the fact that these, all of these straps aren't on the panels and the panels aren't elevated an inch and five eighths off of the ground, um, this is basically what it's gonna look like. I did find in my scrap bin this 10 foot or 12 foot piece of uh, 8.4. So what I'm gonna do is in the, in the combiner box there, I'm gonna run everything parallel. So we'll have 30 volts, at, or 31 or 32 volts at, I don't know, almost 50 amps, so 46 amps, because it's 1120 divided by 24. 1120 watts divided by 24. Or you could do 1120 watts divided by 32, but the charge control will bring that voltage down, so. Um, what I'm going to do is take the 8-4, I'm going to tie two of the number 8s together in each one, so that'll be the positive and the negative, going into the shelter house, um, and then that will of course go into the uh, charge controller, and then from the charge controller, um, it'll tie into the battery bank with this 80 amp circuit breaker. I have a couple of these, so maybe I'll use, well, I only need one for the positive side because uh, everything else is grounded common. The one thing I don't have is some giant blue wire nuts to make uh, those combined connections on the uh, combiner box there that's going to be filled to the max with wires. So 
I think what I need to do is go to the hardware store and I don't know if I want to grab some these are kind of old and worn out fittings that I had sitting around. I think what I'm going to do is just grab some different ones, some different compression fittings. Uh, I don't think I want to use these because they'll have to end up gluing or sicaflexing everything. Um, see if I can find some fittings. And then uh, we'll get this stuff up on the rooftop piece by piece and start installing it. I think this is going to go good, guys. I really do. Um, I'm excited to get this project done, that's for sure. It's one of the big boys that was on my list and jumped on it when I knew I could save some money. So this is going to be fun. Let me head over to the hardware store and I'll get back to you here in a minute.
All right, guys, we got the uh, main cable in here, and uh, that's ready to make up when the controller gets here. I'll probably mount the controller here, and then there's a remote pad. I'll mount that somewhere else, maybe right here or by the door or something. But and then I'll have to hook up one of these breakers, these disconnects, just to be on the safe side from the feed that goes to the from the controller to the batteries. So we'll end up feeding right here back into the 24 volt side of the system and the ground of course that's down here basically basically it'll be feeding into the 24 volt side of the system um, and then uh, I'm gonna use this bus bar I'm gonna have to cut it in half for a terminal block because it's rated for like 150 amps or something like that so I'll cut a section off and then I'll have four of the panel wires on the positive and then the other one will be the ground and then I'll have to use shrink tube and uh, isolation tape to um, make sure those don't touch inside that junction box on the rooftop let's go up to the roof all right guys I got uh, all the penetrations done I made the connections inside the box here I disabled this uh, small panel that was used for the solargizer I basically just cut the wires off of it because it's kind of Sikaflex there. I'm not going to spend time getting that off. I'll have to wait for the Sikaflex to dry. Do a little bit of touch-up painting on that. Not a big deal. But these panels fit on here perfect. We've got a nice inch and five eighths opening there. Well, maybe a little bit greater than that, so that they uh, have ventilation under them, which is recommended. There is a uh, junction box there in the middle. I will have to make that up uh, when I get the controller. I don't want just random voltage going through those wires right now, so we'll make that up when the time is right. But other than that, I think that's gonna be it for today, guys. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed yet, I'd love to have you as a subscriber. But other than that, Take care, guys. I'll catch you next time. See you later. Bye-bye.